Welcome to the Miami Herald Business Show. I'm Nyla Boudou. Right now, there's almost $14 billion worth of credit card debt in Miami and Fort Lauderdale that's delinquent or default. That's right, $14 billion worth of troubled debt. Our local levels of credit card default are almost twice as high as the national average, according to data from Equifax and Moody'sEconomy.com. So people in South Florida should be paying close attention to changes that began last week in how credit card companies operate. It's the first phase of legislation signed by President Obama in May. I'm joined today by Beatrice Hartman, who's the Community Outreach Coordinator for Consolidated Credit Counseling Services. Right now, the Fort Lauderdale-based nonprofit has more than 70,000 people across the country who are enrolled in their debt management program. Beatrice is also a certified credit counselor. Thanks for joining me today. My pleasure. Let's start with the new credit card bill. What are the highlights of that bill and what should people know about that? Well, there's really good things coming up for the consumer and um, we should be very excited about it. And there's a few things that are going coming in place this particular month. Some of them is uh, creditors should be now, um, uh, they should be announcing any increases in interest rates 45 days before or ahead of time instead of 15 days before when um, that was what was un until now. Uh, so now it's 45 days before, and if a person chooses to pay with the previous interest rate, they could, but they won't be able to use the credit card going forward. Um, in addition to that, creditors are now obligated to mail the uh, statements 21 days in advance as opposed to 14 days in advance, which uh, allows people more time to pay their bills. So that's very important as well. In terms of the people who come in to you, you offer a lot of debt advice. What kind of advice do you offer for people who come to you with their problems? Well, it's very important that people um, take control of the personal financials. The first thing that we suggest is that people uh, have a plan. Call it a spending plan or a budget, but it's very important that people take control no matter how, what kind of income you have, what kind of job you have. You should always have a spending plan or budget that will um, allow you to learn more about your, um, your personal spending habits. If you put them in writing every day and every month, you will know what kind of spending habits you have and you will be able to turn those bad habits into good habits. So that's very important. Another thing that is very important is communication with your creditors. That is a key factor today. You should have con uh, consistent communication with creditors, especially if you are in some kind of financial trap right now. It's important that you let them know what's going on. If you lost your job, if you had a pay cut, it's important that they are aware of it and that you try to come up with or negotiate with them some kind of payment plan with this creditors as well. And how do you know when you need when you need to turn for outside help? How would you know that? When you, it's very easy to see it. Is if you know that uh, you can't afford that minimum payment anymore, or that yes, you can afford that minimum payment, but what you're sending is not enough and is not is not letting that balance go down. So every month, as long as you keep sending it the same amount of money, but the balance keeps going up rather than down, then that at that point you see that you need some help because you cannot seem to get out of debt on your own. At that point, definitely reach out for help. Great. Thank you so much for that advice. Thank you. That was Consolidated Credit Counseling Services' Beatrice Hartman. So if you feel like you need to hire a debt counselor to help, how do you find a reputable company? Hartman suggests a few tips. First, always look for a nonprofit debt agency. Many companies may say they're nonprofit, but check with the IRS to make sure the company really has 501c3 status. Also, do some background work by talking to your local consumer protection agency and the Better Business Bureau. That way you can find out if the company has had any complaints on file. Finally, be wary of companies that charge high fees. The state of Florida says a common sign of a scam is a company that requires upfront fees of more than $50 and monthly charges that are more than $40 a month. Thanks for watching. For the Miami Herald Business Show, I'm Nyla Boudou.